Hello, everyone, and welcome to our next panel, Managing and Securing Your Digital Identity in the World of Connected Cars. My name is Alina Alkina. I am a partner of privacy and data protection consulting firm Alida, and also vice chair and co-founder of Women in Securing Privacy. It is my great pleasure to introduce you to our special guest today. He's an inventor, an entrepreneur, a thought leader, chairman, founder and CEO of Solera Holdings, Tony Aquila. Solera Holdings was founded by Tony in 2005 and today is a global leader around uh, with more than 6,000 employees serving customers and partners in 80 countries around the globe. Solera Holdings is a global leader in data so and software for automotive, home ownership and digital identity management. Tony brings a valuable perspective and expertise to the growing international discussion on managing, securing your identity in the world of connected cars. Tony, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Well, we only have um, 20 minutes. Let's dive in. We hear news. We read the headlines. Car security isn't science fiction anymore. Cars right now are able to connect to outside world in many ways. They send signals to our phones, to infrastructure, to other cars. Two years ago, we, uh, we know we had two hackers who were able to remotely connect to a Jeep Cherokee and disabling um, their steering, brakes, um, transmission, and other things just by using the car's entertainment system. So Tony, what is the reality of cybersecurity and privacy in the world with connected cars, especially self-driving cars? So look, I think uh, everybody should really be aware of uh, the car as no different today as you are of your phone. You're still kind of treating your car similar to the way you treated your phone uh, 10 years ago, meaning you got rid of it, you didn't wipe it, you know, you didn't think of all those things. Most people don't realize your phone is synchronizing to your car today, and so there's a whole bunch of your personal information that exists there. Which means is the, you know, the, the car is still in an infotainment phase. You know, technology is being used to entertain you, um, to stimulate you. But in reality, there's a whole bunch of information in there about you, where you go, where you've been. Um, how you drive. Uh, now, there's a bunch of us that are trying to use that information to make the world safer, to make it more secure. But when you start to get all that information flowing from the car, you realize that the car will be used for bad things. I mean, I think if any of you have been around technology long enough and you invent something, it, it, you have this epiphany along the way where somebody used your invention for a horrible thing. And you're like, how did they do that? And um, of course, it happens. Um, and cars will be devices of microterrorism, um, and that's something that's going to be real. But in the connected car world, um, there is a whole bunch of information that sits in there that you need to be very conscious of. Um, and you need to be uh, disciplined about that car when you sell it and or when you leave it somewhere, i.e. most people write home for their address. You shouldn't do that. Um, you know, there's just a whole bunch of evolutionary mistakes that are being made uh, in car ownership. That's actually a nice segue to the next question. Speaking of um, risk, how do car manufacturers perceive those risks and what do they do to protect us as consumers from those threats? Yeah, so, so the car manufacturer today, you know, has the best of intentions. You should know that. I mean, we work a lot with, uh, with them. They really want to stimulate you. They want to win your business. They know it's a more competitive world because you have uh, information at your fingertips. And so they're trying to use the infotainment system. And you got to remember, there are 280 suppliers sending information into those OEMs um, with hardware they're buying or parts or whatever. And some of those are intelligent. Um, every car by the year 2020 is, that's built is likely to have an IP address, which means it's very hackable, um, it's very controllable, it's, it, it will have different levels of intrusion. But the OEMs today are thinking of, of infotainment. They're thinking of some uh, basic safety elements. 
Um, today, we're working on things with one of the world's tire, leading tire manufacturers about tire performance. Um, knowing when you should change your tires, not like, oh crap, I need to change my tires. It'll actually tell you because accident frequency will move up six times um, by the time you change your 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 tires. And you know, cars can be intelligent enough to bring the world as a better place, which is what the OEMs are trying to do. They're trying to win your business, and there's a phenomena occurring is in the advanced worlds, uh, like the United States, the advanced markets are actually decoupling who they are as a person from the car they drive. Two car generations ago, which was each generation's about five and a half years, a person's personality, much like in China, represents the car they drive. Um, that is decoupling, which means the average ownership period of a car is going up. So the OEMs are a little bit afraid, which means service maintenance repair is how they'll have to make money. You've seen many controversial things go, well, we're not making money selling cars. Um, we're making money on servicing and maintaining them. So customer retention is a real big issue for the OEMs as the market changes. And um, they are starting to wake up to security but they haven't quite got there yet. Can't wait, can't wait. Well, let's talk about cybersecurity and privacy uh, and the connection between of them. Cybersecurity plays a critical role in um, protecting our identities um, in the world of connected cars and devices. I think uh, we're much better with our computers and phones. We have security protocols that protect our data. So I don't think we are there yet with connected cars. So. What does the industry need to do to take us to the next level in the world of connected cars? I think, first of all, uh, they have to understand, and com big companies have to make a huge shift. I mean, look, I started my company in my garage. I still have my office in my garage. I, I don't want to leave that um, because I don't want to forget you know, the hunger of, of, of what an innovative mind will do. But I, I think that with respect to the car, the OEMs need to realize that you need to control the content in your car. The, because OEMs, I think, still are struggling with the fact that I sold you this car, but the information flowing from it is still mine. That's not going to last. Um, the reality of it is it's going to be yours. You're going to have to be responsible with it because you're going to want the car to stimulate you as much as possible. And um, so that type of privacy regulation, uh, whether it be by governments, I think some countries in Europe will move before others, but as the PC in the car, the infotainment system synchronizes with your phone, it basically knows a lot about you. And that is another vulnerable point that you need to make sure you're responsible about your fingerprints, your digital fingerprints. So we realized that it was we got big because a car uh, each of you buy a car, but that car has 54 transactions before you sell it. It's 54 touch points along, whether it be tires, brakes, oil, uh, maintenance, recalls, everything. Now, we connected the ecosystem to help you not drive a car when it has a recall and it's an airbag. Um, we did all these things for good reasons, um, but we realized that each of you have 54 transactions and nobody got all that information together, so we did. And uh, as we bring that information together, we, with that information, we could tell so much about you. We could even probably figure out within a standard deviation your credit score. Um, wow. it's, it's pretty crazy. Wow. All right, only 54 transactions, huh? <laughs> All right, so you told me that recently you attended a couple of car shows, uh, including Detroit Auto Show. What stood out to you that could impact privacy and security? So I, I, I still think uh, privacy and security is really not high on the agenda. Um, I think infotainment is. Um, it's still about stimulating me in the buying process. Here's the thing. They're still using technology for their benefit. Most companies use technology first for their benefit, second for their customers. And um, when security and privacy comes up, that's when they'll have capitulated for it to be first about the customer, then about the company, and of course then you'll retain the customer because you'll have loyalty. Um, so I think the things that stood out the most was autonomy. Personally, I think that's going to be a difficult period when you have 1.2 billion cars on the road that aren't autonomous, and you may be sitting enjoying your latte in your autonomous car, but you'll be whacked by a dude who doesn't have one. And <laughs> And, you know, that's the way it's going to work because we live 
in a, in a cross-populated, technologically unadvanced and advanced time. Great, um, and um, I think we have time for one more question. I'm curious, Solera develops software that helps people to manage their cars, homes, their digital identities. What is something people often overlook than safeguarding their most important assets and what they can do, what we as consumers can do to protect ourselves from hackers and cyber criminals? Look, every car built since 1996 has an OBD port. Most people don't know that. That port was created to diagnose cars. Um, that's how uh, today, you know, there's no carburation, there's none of these kind of things. They just plug in a device in the computer, software generated by guys like us, will say, here's what's wrong with that car. Here's what it needs, here's what needs to change, so the technician goes and does it. So technology hit this curve through this port where the technician is the 20 and the software is the 80. That's evolution. Um, before, the guy would listen, he would touch, he would feel, he would smell. Um, those days are gone. However, that port is very valuable because I believe in the future, since we're all device junkies, uh, that you will be responsible enough to where you will buy a 30 to $40 device that will monitor what happens in your car and you'll plug it in. And oh, by the way, if, when I go to rent a car, I'll plug it in, it'll put the seats, everything it can do to my standards, the way I drive, the way I drive safely. Um, it'll lay down things from my calendar and my map, but when I leave and if I walk away from that car, it will call me and say, hey, you left your device. Pull the device, wipes all your information out. It is going to be a time where you will have to be responsible uh, for your privacy and your information. Um, so no differently than a device, you will buy a car, you will become used to that, and you'll plug it in and you'll protect yourself. Uh, some regulation will occur by government in some countries, some it won't. Well, I think we still have more time. I'm gonna put you on the spot. <laughs> so what's next for Solera? What drives you forward? You person who lives in the future, it seems like, and so exciting to see what the company is doing. What's the next step for you guys? So um, for us, identity protection uh, is a big thing. You know, we kind of stumbled across it uh, by accident. We were like, oh my gosh, you know, we're doing all these things for you. We're telling you, you know, based on your pattern, we can tell you whether you need, which gas station you should go to. In fact, we can tell you based on the engine you have, which gas you should put in it. And we can just do all those kinds of things. But we realized that if somebody got that information, they could figure out when you're home, when you're not home, you know, how long the distance is between that, and so many violations could occur. So we said, Jesus, we're, you know, we're these auto dudes, we love cars. I mean, you know, my whole life I could go out for a gallon of milk, I'll come back with a new car. I just love them so much. Uh, and the evolution of all this made me realize as we captured all this information that, oh my gosh, we have to protect people because if a guy like me hacks into your car, I will know you. And uh, that hit us. And so we ended up putting millions and millions of dollars to work. Uh, and we got really crazy passion. And a lot of people, I was public at the time, and a lot of people said, you can't invest this much money in identity protection. I'm like, man, you know, I got to protect people. I see a big opportunity. And I don't think the world realizes identity uh, authentication and protection with your car, your mobile devices, not to mention microterrorism is a big thing. So I said, you know what? Screw this. I took my company private and uh, I innovated away. Today, the Dutch government uses that identity software we built for car for every citizen in the Netherlands because it authenticates you. Um, and you know, we do all kinds of cool things where we're reading your face, your images. We know uh, the probability of you. And so you know, I think you're gonna start to see a lot of companies evolving around protecting you as a person and giving you the power of your information. So we saw that and we think that'll help our customers, meaning the OEMs, the insurance companies, the repair shops, people need to be responsible with your information and you need transparency. Um, and so we're very focused on those things and today you know, we track about half the cars in the world. Well, speaking of transparency, because your company collects data to make sure that um, Inter data among home, connected devices, cars is, um, is helpful to you as a company, but at the same time helpful to consumers and businesses. Where do you draw the line between 
privacy, security, protection of information. How do you communicate what you do to consumers to make sure that they're aware of what's happening, the, the gigabytes of data nowadays? So, uh, in our latest technology, which is called the Digital Garage, which is an app you download and it tracks your car through the life of it, instead of like a big legalese, you know, in which you'll just automatically go down and say, I accept to get to the functionality, what ours is, is it opens up a vault. And that vault starts to monitor any business you do business with that's using the vertical element of the software. And then it asks you, do you want to share information with them? Yes, I do always. I want to keep it private. No, I'm pissed off at these dudes. I don't want to share any information with them. And uh, it basically, just with a touch, it does that. Because the software has to alert you to share or not to share on a, on a, on a more occurrence basis if you choose to. If you choose to be, hey, man, I'm wide open. I'm on Tinder anyways. Who cares? Um, you know, you just go for it. Um, and you can make a conscious decision of that. But how many of you really read that stuff? I don't even think the lawyers in the room do. All right. Well, thank you so much, Sony. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you. And uh, we wish you the best of luck uh, with your company. And um, I think we're done. We're ready for the next panel. Thank you, Tony. Thank you.